It doesn't get more symbolic than literally blowing up the, the inter-Korean liaison office. Um, that was not too big of a surprise. I mean, um, Kim Yo Jung's uh, uh, comments last week alluded to this. We've been watching North Korea a little carefully because it's just been so quiet. So we know we had the Singapore summit here in Singapore less than just about two years ago exactly. We thought we might get some uh, traction out of that. We had the failed Hanoi summit last year. North Korea has been extremely quiet uh, since the beginning of the year. There was a concern that maybe COVID was impacting them heavily. They've said there's been no deaths. And, you know, we, of course, we don't know. But the reality is the following. Their borders are closed. They have a lack of ability now to get hard currency from raw materials coming in or from the, you know, the, the light tourism that they do have. And they're in economically, they're in fairly dire straits. So in some ways, that's not surprising if what they're trying to do is put themselves back on the map a little bit, become a bit more of a foreign policy priority for China, for the U.S., um, to, to go back to their time-honored playbook of let's create some crisis and some bad behavior, and then for the promise of good behavior, we'll get some sanctions and economic relief, which they really need right now. And so this is a really low risk, in a way, uh, way for them to do that. This, this explosion was on their own territory. You know, they're not engaging militarily yet, at least with anyone. This is not an ICBM test. So this is a lower way to lower risk way to get back on the, in the game, as it were.